If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out the full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. That's DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. Hello, Northlanders. It's Wednesday, June 19th. I'm Wyatt Buckner, the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by... Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's look at today's headlines. The body of a missing Duluth man was located in the Pokegama River in the village of Superior Monday afternoon, nine days after he fled a traffic stop in the area. The cause of his death was not released, pending the results of an autopsy, according to a news release from Douglas County Sheriff Matt Izzard. Family members reported 43-year-old Ryan Latte missing on or about Friday, June 14th, to the Duluth Police Department after they hadn't heard from him in several days. Latte was last seen fleeing into the woods from a traffic stop conducted by Douglas County Sheriff's Office deputies at about 8 p.m. June 8th on Cemetery Road south of Wisconsin Highway 105, the release said. An extensive search using multiple canines, aerial drones, and thermal imaging was launched, but Lottie was not located. Douglas County Sheriff's Office detectives, working with Lottie's friends and family, located his body partially submerged in the Pokegama River in an area west of Oaks Avenue and east of Cemetery Road at about 4.50 p.m. Monday. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Superior Fire Department, and Duluth Police Department are assisting with the investigation. A Miliano Mexican restaurant is preparing to open downtown in the near future, according to owner Nestor Tapaya. The new restaurant is located at 220 West Superior Street, formerly home to Toasties, in the historic Duluth Herald Building. The sandwich shop moved to 324 West Superior Street in 2021. Emiliano's will offer fast, homemade cuisine. The menu includes chimichangas, burritos, salads, tacos, enchiladas, fajitas, vegetarian fare, seafood, a kid's menu, desserts, and beverages. Tapaya said, quote, We offer the Mexican pure side, but we also offer a lot of things that a lot of Americans consider Mexican, which is Tex-Mex food, end quote. The new restaurant is expected to open very soon, pending the state's approval of its liquor license. Tapaya said, quote, Margaritas are a really good attraction for Mexican food. If you have a place without margaritas, it's pointless, end quote. The restaurant features a bar near the entrance, with additional booth and table seating in the back. The hours will be 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. DoorDash will be available. Tapaya said, quote, Downtown is just coming back. A lot of people work here. No one lives here, but all the people who are here during the day, they need to be fed, end quote. When Deshaun Israel Bonnell was first sentenced nearly five years ago, it was supposed to provide some closure for the family of Joshua Lavalley. Bonnell had admitted to fatally shooting the Aurora man, and his agreement to plead guilty provided a relatively quick resolution to the court process without subjecting Lavallee's family to a trial. That was until Bonnell successfully appealed his own guilty plea, reopening old wounds and forcing the victim's family to endure a multi-week trial last month. Had Bonnell, who is 23, stood by his original plea, he would have had an opportunity to petition for parole after 30 years in prison but his decision to recant the confession and face a jury sealed his fate. He is now expected to die in prison. Judge Rachel Sullivan imposed a life term without the possibility of parole, a mandatory sentence for his premeditated first-degree murder conviction. Bonnell, then 18, initially admitted he led a blindfolded Lavalley down the Masabi Trail in Hibbing on January 6, 2019, shooting him twice in the face. While he was evasive about certain details in the September 2019 plea, Court documents and the testimony of two co-defendants indicated the killing was staged in response to the victim's alleged advances toward Bonnell's girlfriend. A snowmobiler later discovered Lavallee's body, which had to be identified based on fingerprints. His family learned of his death on what should have been his 34th birthday. While Bonnell admitted to the crime, the Minnesota Supreme Court in December 2022 granted his request for a new trial, finding that his testimony did not technically meet the legal requirements of the charge to which he pleaded guilty. 
Now here's a look at your forecast brought from the News Tribune's Northlandia podcast. Good morning. Today's weather forecast for the Duluth area, partly sunny and breezy with a high temperature right around 70 degrees. Northwest winds around 10 to 20 miles an hour. Partly cloudy and cool tonight with tramps dropping down to around 50, maybe a little cooler away from the lake. And then for tomorrow, a slight chance of showers developing in the afternoon. Partly sunny with a high in the upper 60s. That chance of rain increases as we move into Friday. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist John Wheeler. Thank you to the Northlandia Podcast for their support. The bi-weekly podcast explores curious and unique stories here in the Northland. The latest episode looks at scuba diving in Lake Orbigon. You can find that episode and others at DuluthNewsTribune.com or wherever you also get this podcast. Reporting for today's episode was done by Maria Lockwood, Brielle Bredston, and Tom Olson. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.